look in the closet way back I won't be needing that I won't be needing that oh. I'm ready to fly down 65 Hit the coastline in the sunshine I'm going to find my new high Hit the coastline in the sunshine down here and see what's going on. Diane is, I believe she's in the well watching office talking to the lady in there. Yeah, that's uh, definitely the sailboat I do believe. Pretty large mast. There are people that actually live here. I'm not sure if they live here year round, but I have seen some people stay here for a very long time. I believe you can get electricity and water here. Yeah. This is an interesting boat right here. I'm not going to comment on it because I really don't know that much about boats other than maybe kayaks and that's it. But whoever this boat belongs to, they've taken very good care of that wood. Huh. The little sparrow small sailing boat, but well taken care of. So it's like a research boat that belongs to the state. Yeah, Washington Fish and Wildlife. This 
is a very nice one right here. Except another little wooden boat right here. Yeah, he's got a good size mast on this one. Looks like he's got a little solar here. Maybe a couple hundred watts. Oh, those are some beautiful boats over there. Especially that one right in there, Undaunted. That is nice. You could live on that boat. You could go a lot of places on that particular boat. Unfortunately, I don't really have the skills right now to man a boat like that. Right now, my skills are probably limited to something like this right here hmm. express here in port townsend we offer two different types of whale watching tours we have a four hour at 10 and 2 30 it's four hours out on the water going wherever the whales may be whether that's south or north um, and then we offer a full day tour from nine to five and it has a two hour lunch break in friday harbor in the san juan islands where you can get off the boat enjoy lunch walk around Friday Harbor and come back. Both of those are guaranteed to see whales. If you don't, we'll give you a voucher and you can come back with us anytime, never expires on us. And then on Saturday evenings from June to August, we offer a puffin cruise out to Protection Island. It's from six to 9 p.m. and you're able to see the puffins as they migrate into the sound. The type of whales that we are seeing right now are humpbacks, minkies, gray whales, and orcas. Um, how much is the Puffin uh, tour? The Puffin cruise uh, is 85 per adult. Um, as for the whale watching prices go, it's 95 for the four hour and 115 for the all day. And what's your season here for taking people out on the boat? Yeah, so it's peak season for humpbacks, minkies, and orcas, May through October for gray whales. That's March and April. At the beginning of our peak season, which is right now, we'll still see a few gray wolves in the sound, um, but most of them do migrate back south. Well, thank you so much. You're Appreciate welcome. that. And I just want to say that we have been on one of their tours. We brought some friends out here with us from Germany, and we had a great time. So if you get a chance, I do recommend that you stop by and take a tour with them. James, I'm a bicycle tour guide for Wilderness Voyagers. I'm lucky <laughs> enough to come up to Port Townsend four times a year we give tours up here. We're an all-inclusive bicycle vacation that gives a tour through the Olympic Peninsula and we start right here in Port Townsend. We rode the Larry Scott Trail into here and then we'll move on Olympic Discovery Trail and uh, I look forward to coming to Port Townsend just for the history, for the beautiful weather and all the great food. <laughs> so, um, what is the longest bike ride now? Is this just like a one day bike ride or is it longer? We give a five day tour on the Olympic Peninsula. We move on to Lake Crescent Lodge, we'll be there. We'll move on to Soul Duck Hot Springs after that. And uh, in five days, we pick people up in Seattle. We come straight here and we continue our tour on. And we'll be back next week and then we'll be back a couple more weeks in, the, in, in August. So, how many uh, miles do you have to be able to ride a bike a day to, you know, do this biking vacation? On this tour, it's a very laid back tour. We actually intermingle hikes in this tour later on. Um, I think our most ride one day is almost 30 miles. Oh, it's not very, not real hard. Uh, there are some hills around here, but largely it's all rail trails we ride on. And it's a very leisurely, very relaxing and enjoyable vacation. Now, don't laugh at this question, however. Um, do people take the electric bikes? Yes. <laughs> they do. 
Oh, we have like huh? seven on this tour alone, I believe. Seven? Okay, yeah, so I so guess my mountain bike, uh, I'll be out of place. I think I need to get electric bike. We have a few mountain <laughs> bikes up there too, but yes, electric bikes are getting more and more popular. Yes, well, for the uphills, uh, it really yeah. does make more sense. Sure, let's of... everybody be equal. Anybody who wants to join him for biking vacations, <laughs> you know, to come here in Port Townsend. Yep. Next to the Bishop Hotel. You That's can right. Found. Great. Love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Eric. I am the owner of the Bishop Hotel in Port Townsend. It's a 131 year old building, originally a cigar factory and hemidor. Um, and then it was, after that, military housing. After that, it was an apartment building. And in the 70s, it became a Victorian themed hotel. Um, it was ran like that up until previously. My partner Jessica and I purchased the building in September and we are turning it back into more of an industrial feel and adding a restaurant. And um, how many rooms do you have upstairs? We have 16. 16, wow. The restaurant opens at the end of July 2021. Oh, okay. And uh, the hotel is open for business and has been the whole time. Um, yeah, Port Townsend is a lovely place. It's a port town. Originally, it's where the railroad terminus was supposed to end, but they ended up stopping at Tacoma, and that became the port of Washington. So we're just a small little port town. It's really beautiful here, lots of nature. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. The 1975 Volkswagen. Cute little dinette in there. And here's the sink. And just a small little closet here to hang your clothes. But how cute is that? And here's your bed. That is so cute. So the Starlight Coupe is a 1949. And it's selling for eighteen thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. So many different types of headlights and rear lights and hubcaps and this is the place to come if you're looking for some antique auto parts. He's been here 41 years. That's a long time. Uh, so I'm looking at the Ford. It's a 1929 Model A, and it's a Woody Station wagon. And what was interesting, this gentleman um, that I was speaking with was teaching me about how it only had one windshield wiper at the time, and then on the passenger side, you didn't have one. And then also, what was interesting is, we just take these things for granted, so it's interesting. Uh, the headlights, you know, you just couldn't turn a knob and turn it on. You actually, you actually had something on the left side? Yes, they actually had little canisters where the, there was compressed gas that lit the lights. They weren't as bright, but kind of like lanterns. So they okay. were still lights. So they actually had to add electric, electrical lights, and you can see the coloring in the cords a little different. Let me get you away that. They had to run power to these lights to make them street -wide. Wow. Um, the other thing you'll notice is probably a horn. Okay. It may or may not have had that kind of a horn. Okay. All right. Now that's an electric horn for today. Beep. If you're on the road, they would probably have had an old bike horn. Oh, okay. Back in, back in, in 1900s, there were very few cars on the road. Yes. And in addition, you didn't have a lot of passing. There were one or two lane roads. So a horn would be rare to have an actual horn horn on it. It would probably right. be more of a squeak horn or a pump horn. And just like this, grandfather an old one. It was an old bugle type horn. You'd hit them. You'd squeeze it. Oh, and these okay, vehicles that's also right. Were traveling very that's fast. right. There is um, seat belts that are in there right now, but they were not there at the time. There's okay. no speedometer on that. There's some pressure gauges and yes. other things, so you really had no. You weren't going very fast. Right? Okay, you so how fast could they go? Would you say? Um, I guess it would all depend. Um, 
And I'm, this is a judgment based on the, the yeah. age of it. Probably 30, 40 miles an hour. 30 to 40 miles an hour. It's not super fast. And then you were saying that... Um, there was no seat belts. No, yeah. Th- so, so somebody added yeah, somebody added them so they could um, drive this vehicle at the time. So they put some in. And then I found interesting what you said is... Um, there, oops, I better go out. There's no, they, they had curtains in here. There was no windows. No windows. So they so, would have these little tabs where they would have a fabric uh, curtain that okay. you would put on that you could lift up for fresh air, but you could also put down when it started to rain. Oh, interesting. So really didn't have windows, right? And if you notice too, there's no windows to roll up, right? There's no crank. Yeah, no crank, yeah. yeah. So this is only a curtain, no windows. Oh, yes. So when it's cold out in the wintertime, Obviously, it was a little colder driving, yes. but it was better than being in a horse and carriage. So if you had a flat, you had to change your tire, no trunk, there was your spare. Right okay, in front. Okay, right in the front. You're here in the garage that started uh, back in 1917. It was a garage that was a very special garage, all fireproof. It's two stories. Uh, they sold Buicks and Fords at that time. This is the picture of it. It just isn't finished before they had signs up, so then later on, they had uh, the Buick sign, they had the Ford sign like I have here in the shop. And this uh, area was, uh, later on, was called Auto Row. So this whole area over here was a gas station, a repair garage. Uh, Later on, the Chevrolet dealership over here, and Middleton Motors before Napa was in the building here. This is a <clears throat> two floors, so we have uh, cars, mostly my own collection of cars downstairs, and the cars that are here right now are cars that we get periodically to come in for sale. We sell a number of classic cars, and I like, I tend to like the older cars, that, you know, that's what I like here. And <clears throat> the signage that you see in here is uh, a lot of signage is from here. Uh, it's not signage that we will sell. If we get other duplicates in, we will sell them, but some things that I've repaired that came like out of the cashier sign that maybe you'll see here. And the cashier sign then is from the Buick Agency in Seattle. Oh, oh. So it, I restored it, it was a broken mm-hmm. sign. Uh, the other things here, uh, this, the Buick sign that you see over okay. here would have been placed on the building back in the uh, teens and twenties. Okay. So those are some of the older artifacts. Things that we have that also have been in Port Townsend is the uh, the old cash register here. What year is that? And the cash register is. Uh, from a uh, dry goods, but originally it could have been out of a bank. We are not sure, but it, it's a Port Townsend piece. Wow, interesting. So we've collected a number of things that have been here in Port Townsend. And and what is that mirror over there? That the ca- this is a cigarette machine that came oh, out of New yes. York. So it's <laughs> a early, early cigarette machine that would have been what year most likely it? down in Ma- Manhattan. Would oh, have been in a, in a okay. uh, hotel lobby. Oh, this was an early, lobby. early... What, what year do you think that is, possibly? It's the 30s. In the 30s, 1930s, wow. Fun to, fun to see. The gas pumps. Yeah. The older one is the one with uh, what we call the red crown. Okay. That's an old piece. And if you swing around... 1926. 1926 Richfield glass globe, and that's called a visible pump. Visible so, because I guess I was too young to remember those globes on there. Most likely you were a little wow. bit too young. So that's that's yeah, even before yeah, my time. So. Okay. Wow. We have a really interesting place here. Well, thank you. Thanks yeah. for viewing me. We, we do a service for helping people with their parts as well as the cars. So, um, as far as the parts go, so, I'm, I mean, it's just a question. How far back do people come in and order? What year? What is the oldest vehicle that they may order parts for, for their vehicles? It's unusual today to have people coming in for really early, early cars because uh, the interest has changed with young people. 
Okay. So what's really, really popular right now is Volkswagen. Volkswagen. Volkswagen, as you can see a couple here right now, we've sold several. Okay. They are big. But I will get, <clears throat> I think the earliest car I sold here was a Model, Model R Ford 1907. Wow. So we have sold some early cars, but it's rare to find people coming in asking for a 1917, 1907. So is it um, still a very popular hobby to remodel cars and then sell them? Can people still make a great profit on that? To buy an there's, antique There's a lot vehicle? of that, there's definitely a lot of that going on. And as, uh, when we get back in after this pandemic, the cars will be moving again, <clears throat> excuse me, over to uh, Europe because Europe is paying uh, big prices for some of the cars. Oh, okay. So we've actually shipped some cars to yeah, yeah, yeah. to Europe. Okay, interesting. So like a Jaguar XKE, something like that. BMWs. <laughs> and BMW, <clears throat> yeah. BMWs are good. There's one from Massachusetts. I think it's great when you have a passion for a hobby or whatever it is and it just keeps you going keeps you going in a positive way in life yeah no don't quit keep going well, it, yeah. it, it keeps you healthy we, yeah, we can buy stuff online but it's so much better when we can come in here and see the actual car and this is my brother's business, uh, the sewing machine business. He started in 1968 and he is still real active and a lot of that is because of the COVID. People were making masks and they brought out their old machines and some of them needed repair so he would get called and repair them. He also has sold sewing machines for years. He transports the machines to a lot of older people because it's hard for them sometimes to even get out. Some of the machines that he also works on are a little more heavier duty, like this Adler, the Ber Bernina. I never heard of those can, makes. Is that made in the U.S. or is that some made of these elsewhere? are made in uh, Europe, Germany? Oh, uh, okay. He, again, it's his business and uh, he knows a, a lot more than I know about these machines. But, uh, of course, Singer Corporation here was yeah. from the U.S. But uh, if you have a, a FAF, FAF also is a German, uh, very heavy duty machine. They can use these. At, you can see the leather is just so thick here, it sews right through that. So oh, that is pretty heavy machine to go through that leather. It that is. leather strap like you said. The, uh, the mechanism on these are so substantial and, and uh, they're so precision that they just drive right through and they do a beautiful job. Um, sir, what were you saying about the wood boats over here? You were saying Port Townsend is known, known for their wood boats. We are known for our wood boats uh, events that happen here, like the Wooden Boat Festival, and we are known for the uh, boat Wooden Boat School, and that brings people from all over the East Coast, wherever, to learn about the building and care repair of wooden boats. Interesting. Primarily. Yes, because. Um, I think in Port Townsend, is there like five different um, garages or shops here for boats? Is there like five different? There's there's a number of, of businesses here. Oh, we also have a, a beautiful company outside of town here that handles wood of all dimensions and all types, quality wood. Great. Well, thank you for that information. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thank okay. you. This is one of the um, nicest wood shops that I've ever been into. And there's a lot of local artists that have their work in the shop.
not sure what kind of wooden boat this is right here. I don't think I'd want to carry this one around. Tsunamis. They can't be a thing here. The boat shop rents space so people can work on their own boats and they also work on their own fleet as well. And they also teach classes on boat building. The sailboat finally launched and they have just a great day for sailing. I hope they have a great time out there. Right there is the ferry coming in. Washington State ferries are a lot of fun to ride on, at least for me anyway, it makes you feel like a kid. I've, uh, you can, some are bigger than others you can drive your vehicle on. I like to just actually walk on the ferry and just ride with no particular destination in mind. Just maybe go to downtown Seattle and walk around. It's a cool little place right here called the Nifty Fifties, a soda fountain. I like how they have this stools in there at the counter. Look at this old building here. It's like a yarn shop. That is really an old structure right there. Oh, this has some work done to it. We're at the north end right now, Port Townsend, where some of the old shops are. Some of the older buildings, like that red brick building right there, which I believe is part of a yarn shop. I'm going to be walking down and show varying, various views of Port Townsend. It's a very popular place here in Washington, where a lot of tourists come here on the weekends in the summertime. Here's a little area, another little area they have where you can come over and have a picnic. I'm wondering, yeah they do, they have another little beach right here. It's a great little place for kids to come down to and play. Look at this old building right here. Look at the architecture. The architecture is awesome. Well, I'm Charles Jenkins. I'm the owner of the Spice and Tea Exchange here in Port Townsend. So our store here, we go ahead and sell all kinds of spices, teas, specialized salts and sugars. We have all kinds of loose leaf. We've got uh, black, oolong, green, white, and our herbals. So what we do here is we go ahead and sell and blend our spices here in Port Townsend. I myself am actually one of the newer owners. We just took over the shop about four weeks ago from the previous owners who had been here in Townsend for about eight years and we're, we've been really enjoying the community here. Everybody has been friendly. It's been a very welcoming transition and it's been really lovely being in this town. What kind of taste uh, do you sell here that um, is not as strong as black tea or it doesn't stain your teeth? I'm of course, just curious. so usually what you're looking for in the less stronger ones that still have your caffeine, you're looking at your greens and your whites. So 
they're actually all the same tea leaf. It's just they have a process in making it stronger and the black is the stronger ones. So your greens are going to be your more typical ones and then the whites are just barely processed as far as that goes. And then we also have our herbals which don't have the caffeine or that tea leaf in it and it's steepable plants, roots, spices, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um. So I guess I'm going to have to look into that because I kind of like the uh, lighter teas. I've been kind of switching uh -huh. from coffee and, and drinking more tea lately. What I have here today is one of our accessories for teas here. It is an infuser mug. So making tea these days for our loose leaf tea is pretty simple. All you have to do is take off your lid here, open up one of our packets and do about a teaspoon per marker here. It does have instructions as our teas are varying strengths, so I'll go ahead and give you the instructions on how to do that. Once you put that in there with hot water, you let it steep for usually around five to eight minutes. The packets have a bit more specific time, but it's, it tends to be the personal's preference. And once you have it all steeped up, you just put the lid back on here and you pour it. And as it goes, your loose tea leaves will catch up on our little strainer here and you won't get any in your cup and you'll have a perfectly steep cup of tea there. Perfect. Well, we have here some of our tea as well as one of our mugs. We're going to go ahead and explain how to go ahead and use it. So on our tea, if you flip them over on the back here, it'll give you some info, but it also gives you steeping info, which is how long you go ahead and put in that water. We have this wonderful handy dandy infuser. You go ahead and open up our packet here and you take your teaspoon. And since this cup is about 16 ounces, give or take a little bit, You'd go ahead and take two teaspoons of our tea here. You just put it into this infuser bit here. You fill it up with hot water. You go ahead and put your infuser back in here. Leave the lid on. Then you follow the steeping instructions. This particular tea, you only need to do two to three minutes. Some of them are five to eight. It depends. They always have instructions on the back for us. And when it's done, all you simply need to do is take off our lid here. Take this out and it's really easy to clean. All you have to do is turn it over and dump it out in your trash can. It should all come out nice and easy. And you have your nice cup of hot tea to enjoy. I love my, my mug. I absolutely do. And it makes it so easy. And I'm glad that you mentioned that teas are all different, where it can take two to three minutes or longer. Exactly, yes. And I, and I think that's important to know that. So um, I'm happy that I switched over to tea. So anyways, thank you so much. Of Appreciate course, that. it's no issue at all. This is the Belmont Hotel. Wow, established 1889. I bet at one time that was a really awesome hotel. Look at that. It's a pretty good shot right there. I believe those steps right at the bottom right there go all the way to the top up there. It's really an awesome old town right here. They have some little stores that are really interesting here. You just never know what you're going to find. Crystals, herbs, jewelry, and more. Something interesting I noticed about these buildings at the very top. You can see a date on there. There's another one right there. I think that says 1889 right in the upper center. 
They have wonderful Thai food here, so if you're ever in the area, why don't you come by and try it?